the South African Rand are among the most iconic banknotes in the world. Their front features Nelson Mandela, South African revolutionary and political leader, each in its own bold and striking colour. And then the reverses portray Africa's Big Five, like a sort of virtual safari through the country's savanna. The Green 10 sees a rhinoceros, the Brown 20 an elephant, the Red 50 a lion, the Blue 100 a Cape Buffalo, and the Orange 200 a leopard. Whilst many banknotes feature animals, including those from Costa Rica and the Philippines, few are as bold and as instantly recognisable as the Rand. They are a true icon of wild currency. And then last year, to commemorate the 100th anniversary of Nelson Mandela's birth, the country released a series of five commemorative notes, lovingly dubbed Randellas, which tell the story of his and the nation's struggle against the apartheid government. 400 million individual notes were released, so they're not exactly rare or collectible, but in my mind they're one of the most interesting series of banknotes ever to be released. In this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at them, so if you enjoy it, please consider subscribing. First up, the 10 Rand. As you can see, the front hasn't really changed. There's some additional text on the far right, stating that the notes are from the commemorative series, and a couple of minor changes, including a slightly updated pattern in the background, and an interesting new pattern in the colour changing 10. Other than these changes, they are essentially the same note, and although no longer present on the reverse, the banknote has retained its rhino theme. Rhinos can be seen in the background to the left of Mandela, made up of microprint 10s, and they can be seen themselves in microprint in the denomination on the left of the note. There's also this really cool security feature called the see-through register, where an incomplete image of a rhino is shown on the front, and what's missing shown on the back. If you hold up the note to a light source, the image is complete, indicating that it's likely genuine, as counterfeiters often have difficulty printing the two sides perfectly in line. The front also still features rock carvings by the sand, the indigenous people of southern Africa, and the front of all notes highlight a decorative pattern under UV light. The real changes start on the reverse, introducing the note's primary theme, birth. The note displays Mvezo, the small rural hamlet in which Mandela was born on the 18th of July 1918. It's one of South Africa's poorest regions, and sheep and goats can be seen grazing the hills in front of traditional round huts. Although he grew up in a nearby village, Mvezo is where his story began. As a side note, all of the new notes feature the same portrait of Mandela from 1961, aged 43, the year before his capture. I can only assume there weren't sufficient photographs of Mandela's life available to use a different portrait for each time period. Anyway, on to the 20. This is where things get a bit more historical, so please forgive me if I'm massively oversimplifying anything. Once again, the front of the 20 is largely the same, retaining the theme of elephants, whilst the reverse now portrays a theme of life. It sees Mandela's home in Soweto, a single-storey matchbox house where he moved in 1946, aged 28. It was now two years before the legal adoption of apartheid, a policy of institutionalised racism and white supremacy, although the racial discrimination was still a prominent feature of life at the time. Here Mandela joined the African National Congress, or ANC, a political party aimed at bringing all Africans together and ensuring their rights and freedoms. When the apartheid government came into power in 1948, Mandela and the ANC led peaceful protests over the next decade. Things eventually turned violent in 1960, when a crowd of protesters entered a police station in Sharpville during a demonstration. Police opened fire on the crowd, massacring 69 people and injuring several hundred more. The Sharpville massacre changed everything. South Africa declared martial law and outlawed the ANC. There were riots around the country and the ANC shifted their focus from passive resistance to armed resistance. Over the next five months, Mandela was imprisoned along with other activists and members of the ANC. Once released, he organised conferences and protests, spending the following two years travelling the country disguised as a chauffeur in order to evade capture. During this time, Mandela obviously avoided his Soweto home, and in fact didn't return until after his eventual release in 1990. The building is now a museum. The 50 Rand features lions, and continues the story on its reverse, with the theme of capture. On the 5th of August 1962, Mandela was captured on a stretch of road near Howick in the east of South Africa, when the car he was driving in disguise was stopped by police. 
Today the site is home to another museum and an amazing sculpture named Release, consisting of 50 steel columns to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Mandela's arrest. The sculpture is even featured on the banknote. The 100 Rand sees Cape Buffalo and represents struggle, displaying Robin Island, where Mandela was subsequently imprisoned for 18 years. He spent his time here working in a lime quarry under forced labour. The work was incredibly physically demanding and he endured intense psychological torture from his captors too. But during this time Mandela grew as a leader and as a moral leader and used any free time to study for his law degree. It wasn't until he was 64 years old when he left Robin Island, transferred instead to a different prison after almost two decades of intense physical hardship. Some years after his release, Mandela returned to the island and placed a rock in the former lime quarry. Other former political prisoners did so too, creating the now infamous pile of rocks shown on the banknote. It was another eight long years before Mandela was finally released in 1990, amid growing international pressure and fears of an all-out racial war. Mandela and the president at the time spent the next four years working towards dismantling apartheid, which culminated in the 1994 general election, South Africa's first democratic election in which citizens of all races were allowed to take part. Mandela, representing the ANC, was elected president in a landslide victory, a scene represented on the 200 Rand note. More specifically, the note shows the 9 meter statue of Mandela in front of the Union buildings in Pretoria, arms open to embrace the nation, symbolising the note's theme of destiny. The statue was unveiled 11 days after Mandela's eventual death in 2013, marking the end of the official mourning period. The front of the note retains the theme of the leopard, from humble beginnings in rural Mveso on the Tenrand, to the exuberant golden orange celebration of the 200, this is a series of banknotes unlike any other. And in creating this series, the South African Reserve Bank has documented not only Mandela's story, but the single most important story in the entire nation's history.